we started. Hey everyone, oh. I'm Norn Queen Alexis and welcome back to the channel. Today, 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 I'm on the wrong page. Boop! Eisenhorn TV show. I'm not gonna say I called it, but if you go back a few months, a few months, even all the way back to when I was on uh, um, Remlaze's podcast, uh, I, whatever, uh, Adeptus Podcast, this, that's it. Uh, I said, and I quote, if they were to make a TV show or movie, it would have to follow an inquisitorial war band. And now we have Eisenhorn. Yeah, who best to better to follow than the OG? Right? And joining me today is Victor and John. Victor, you may hey. know as Viggy the GM, and John, you know as the butt. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So today we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and read through this thing, and yeah. Congrats Shall on we? calling it. Thank you, White. Thank you for the uh, donation. It means a lot. You're awesome. Also, it's six 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 Mark of Slanesh. Love it. Shall I? Yes. Let's go. Heretic, traitor, rogue, inquisitor, TV star. Okay, folks, this is pretty big. You might want to sit down. Ready? Here it is. Eisenhorn is being developed as a TV show. Boom! As usual, no one expected the Inquisition. Development of the TV show, starring Warhammer 40K's most infamous Inquisitor, is being headed up by Big Light Productions, an award-winning team who have made some great TV shows. Uh, want me to read the Asterix or not? Yeah, go ahead and read the Asterix. Oh, uh, the asterisk actually, well, the first one says, but even if you didn't expect it, anyone who has read the books may well have thought this would make a great TV show. We certainly did. And Terrible the second one video is just... game, by the way. Terrible yeah... video game. Look, if I wanted Mark Strong to read me Eisen... the Eisenhorn book, I would have taken that uh, in a heartbeat. So, uh, moving on. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what does in development mean? Not down with all that Hollywood lingo? Well, development is the process that all TV shows go through prior to production. Here's a handy guide to how it works. Uh, want me to read that thing? No, we could just look at it. All of our all characters, right. outline, concept art, script writing, into the breach, yada, yada, yada. But let me just give I, some thought on this really quickly. I, that ship is called Divine Development. <laughs> that Okay, that's hilarious. Uh. Um, actually, the, what's funny is that's a lunar. No. Yeah, that's a Lunar, because it only has one gun rack on it. Ha! I know that stuff. Uh, nerd. Anyway, so if you guys have read Eisenhorn, it follows three different books. Actually, I think it follows more than three books, but the three big books are Heretic, Xenos, and uh, Demon, or... Hereticus, uh, Xenos, Hereticus, uh, Xenos, Malleus, Hereticus, in that order. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So it's actually really cool that we get uh, books like this. Uh, shows like this. And I think GW should actually follow this line of thinking, especially when they start, depending on how this comes out. If it comes out as good as like, say, I'm not going to say like, I'm definitely not going to say that one show that everybody likes that has Vikings and dragons in it. That, that um, Oh my God, somebody is going gonna, is gonna to demand my nerd card for not knowing the name of... Game of Thrones does not have yes, Vikings. Yes, there we go. Vikings and Dragons, Game of Thrones. No, they're not Vikings. <laughs> they want to be Vikings. <laughs> Take they're that, like, Victor. They're, they're like Kraken Lords or something. No, but I'm yeah. not going to say it's going to be that good. It might be something along the lines of maybe like Star Trek or something with some better development. Like... Um, I Probably Breaking Bad is a good example of what we should expect out of this. Not too much CGI, but when it's there, it's there, and it looks really good. I'm hoping they follow the entire storyline, but not all in one season. I'm really hoping they do seasons based on each of the books. Otherwise, it would be a little bit too much to squeeze into such a short runtime. The average TV show has a 12-episode uh, runtime. Um, so I'm kind of, kind of hoping for something along those lines. I think that would be really good and a really cool and a really good way to set this, set the tone off. And then once they finish off with Eisenhorn, uh, before we get into anything else, this is my thought. Everybody wants a Horus Heresy book series, uh, TV show. The problem with that is just like Warhammer 40k, there's too much to try to talk about. 
all at once. It's simply too much. They shouldn't try to explain in Astartes. They should just be there and be angelic and it, not even like mention it. Like they need to do this very well. Let the atmosphere do the work for them. They don't want to purposely go out of their way to explain everything, which a lot of 40K books tend to do, mostly for space filler. Uh, they'll start saying random stuff and it just gets too clogged up and you're just like, why do they even bother reading this? Like, who needs to know where a Mark III Kraken Bolter comes from? No one. I do. No one. Definitely not hey. Victor. He is He is not real. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Victor. Mm. No, but what I would like to see for going forward, if they if this series is good, live action, uh, which I'm kind of worried about. Um, it, it should be live action. Yeah, we don't know if it's live action yet. I haven't read below this point just yet, so I'm just giving my what I can, okay? If it is live action, I'm hoping they go that far, you know, with the books and everything. But if they do a 30K one, I want them to follow Nathaniel Garrow because, and not just because, haha, I'm a fangirl of Nathaniel Garrow because I totally am, but, but because his books focus on a single to three characters, sometimes five, where it's very easy to focus on and very simple to actually get through the stories of the horse heresy and everything from one person's perspective and actually have this tight knit story that has gone over three books. So it would be good as a short story for this. And then for them to do that moving into the future, um, just focusing on single characters and single character books for making TV shows. Because if they made Space Marine the TV show, it would be absolutely silly. That would, that would, it would be too much. Um, I like it better set from a specific character's point of view rather they than the entire genre. You, you know what would probably fit a marine show better? Animation. An a anime? really style, not, not anime, like really st stylized animation. Hey, babe, turn off your phone. Hold on. Um, yeah. It's almost Don't like, it. it's almost like Death of Hope is doing that, just that. And that is going to be really good. But even they are focusing on one specific event. And that's what they're making this stuff about. And then they're moving into different projects, which I really, really, really like. So moving on, Eisenhorn is, of course, a character who has been explored in detail by the New York Times bestselling author, Dan Abnett, across oh, a series mate. of novels. Here is uh, what Dan had to say when we told him. Go ahead. Gregor Eisenhorn is a relentless force in the dark future of the Warhammer universe, a destroyer of demons and a purger of heretics, implacable, powerful, and dedicated. But the appeal to me from a moment I started writing him was his complexity. He is not the simple, ruthless hero he appears to be. His battle with the warp uh, leads him into dark places and forces him to question his duty, his understanding of the Imperium, and his own identity. With Eisenhorn, it's not just the adventures, and they are certainly vivid, it's the journey he takes to the very limits of what he is and what it means to be loyal. Do you want me to uh, give you the perfect quote from Eisenhorn himself, who kind of summarizes himself in one go? Yeah, of course. Let me see. Also, I'm just going to interrupt you really quickly. A Caiaphas Kane's TV series would be amazing. Oh, that would be so cool. Oh, man. Sorry, that would be the best. All right. Here, here we go. So, all my life, I've had a reputation for being cold, unfeeling. Some have called me heartless, ruthless, even cruel. I'm not. I'm not beyond emotional response or compassion, but I possess, and my master count this perhaps as my paramount virtue, a singular force of will. Throughout my career, it has served me well to draw on this facility and steel myself, unflinching, at all that this wretched galaxy can throw at me. To feel the pain or fear or grief is to allow myself a luxury I cannot afford. Gregor Eisenhorn, 240.m41. Now, was that Gregor Eisenhorn describing himself or Gregor Eisenhorn describing you, babe? That was him describing himself. See? It works for both ah. of them. Goddamn. <laughs> 
All right, you want to keep going? Keeping on. The series development is being led by Frank Spotness, who has previously worked on shows such as Man in the High Castle and The X-Files, for which he shares three Golden Globes. Here's what he had to say about the project. Before you do you that, let... before you do that, The X-Files is okay. But you've it's... actually seen The Man in the High Castle, right? Yeah, I have seen some parts of it. Uh, I actually think I sat down and watched one mid-season, uh, first season one episode. And... I think they, they can nail the tone of 40k as, well, the, let's just say that this man can nail oppressive atmosphere. All right, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Okay, right. go ahead. We are delighted to collaborate with Games Workshop to develop the beloved visionary world of Warhammer 40,000 into a TV, uh, TV series. Warhammer 40,000 is steeped in rich and complex lore with a myriad of traditions and stories that have accumulated over time in this thrilling and complex world making it one of the most exciting properties to adapt for television. Oh, and that the truth. Uh, for uh, for te uh, television audiences worldwide and franchises loyal global fan base. There's nothing else like it on television, and we are incredibly excited to tap into our own experience creating imaginative, complex, and compelling worlds to bring this incredible saga to the screen. This, like, they are, like, tapping into a gold mine of stuff here. Yeah, there's like, a ton of different stories. There's a ton of different lore. Uh, personally, I would take a Sister of Battle lore, uh, Sister of Battle series, like, you know, Faith and Fire and that series. That'd be amazing. Yeah, like, if I, like, if this becomes a hit TV show, they can make up, make all of the spinoffs. The problem is, <clears throat> and I'm going to, I'm going to point this one out too. The problem is the 40K fan base. And I know this seems weird, like we're all hyped up for it, but the 40K fan base is the most critical fan base that I've ever seen. They are super critical about everything 40k related. And I'm really worried that if this doesn't because this show is going to try to appeal to mass audiences. So it's not strictly going to focus on the 40k fans. And that's going to piss off a lot of the 40k fans and they're going to be upset and they're going to be like, oh, this show is actually garbage. And the th yeah. The th thing, I think there is a saving grace here. The reason that Eisenhorn is probably getting picked here is the reason that the book has, like, the book's reputation as something that you can read without needing to know anything about 40k. Yeah, and out of the, out of the, like, the big books, like, let's go with the Primarch series, for instance, you can't read no. any of those except Fulgrim without knowing 40k. Yeah, like, that... Fulgrim? Fulgrim, you can actually read and enjoy the book itself without knowing anything about Warhammer 40k. And that's what they need to do. They need to focus on the mass audience instead of just the unique individuals. You know, because Fulgrim removes himself from 40k and just focuses on a single planet. Yeah, he does. Yeah, that's good. Well, but yeah, I think... His whole I thing think... wasn't the single planet. His whole thing was more of character-based interactions well, than are you talking else. about... The f are you talking about the Primark Fulgrim book or Fulgrim, the Horus Heresy novel? Uh, whichever one I have in my living room, I can't remember. I hate Those that there's two yeah, I hate that there's different. two different books named the exact same thing. Uh, different series, but yeah, the exact same thing. Uh... Both both written completely different. One is written really good, the other one's written like garbage. That would be the Josh Reynolds one that is written like garbage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, just for like a anecdotal example of how, just how, so you want to know how accessible Eisenhorn is? How? Mope's mom, Mope's mom read Eisenhorn and liked it. Oh, that's fair enough. Yeah. So, if a parent who has knows nothing about 40k and is, and 40k is not aimed at them, if they can just sit down and read a thriller like a thriller crime novel because that's what i saw it is it's it's a it's a crime novel like yeah. a mystery mystery thing a, a regular who done it if you will and it's just that the uh, the book starts with a bunch of freezing nobles getting murdered and the quest is to find out why so there you go uh moving on uh before you read that i actually think this is a really 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 solid time to release 
a 40k series because if they released it like a year ago it would be out competed by um viking dragon show uh song of ice and fire what is it actually called wow why i still am drawing a blank on the name game of thrones thank you um it would be competing with game of thrones and it would it would simply be out competed by game of thrones so let's hope the men are sexy let's hope the women are sexy and it mass appeals to everybody and they actually make this series a success because i really want it to be uh just to put a quick point on what you said about release uh this thing is not getting released for a few years yeah of course it's going to take three years just to make it yeah so they there's no chance in hell they would have gone up against game of thrones Moving on. But it could take over the spot that Firefly had. That is true. Ooh, that is true. Also, everybody in the chat, if you want to ask a question during the stream, simply at me or at John. This way we can actually get those questions really quickly. If you want your question answered right away and want to support the channel, please consider using the super chat feature. It goes a long way to helping out the channel. Anyway, back to this. Indeed. So, all in all, pretty exciting stuff. Here at Warhammer Community, we'll be keeping you updated on the show's progress. It is worth saying now, development is far from short process, so don't expect the Inquisition on your TV for a few years just yet. There we go. In the meantime, if you're not already familiar with the novels, now would be a great time to catch up. That way, you can prep yourself for future water cooler moments where you get to say knowing things like... I remember that bit in the book, or uh, and oh yeah, I was in Eisenhorn Slam before it was cool. Ironically, I'm not a fan of Eisenhorn. <laughs> I, I am, as befits such a uh, well-loved character. Eisenhorn also has a model, which I have, uh, a faithful representation of the character from the novel series early in his life. You know, for the whole radical thing. Now, before anything, I just want to point this out: his head is bigger than his chest. <laughs> Eh. Have fun with that Her- knowledge. Heroic scale, heroic scale. Just they should have uh, upped go- him to a thirty-two scale. They didn't even need to. They, he's at a thirty-two. Just, it just fix his head. It's so big. Just scroll up. The artwork his is head, way better. His head is bigger than his shoulder pads, and that's forty k for you. Not if you're a space marine. <laughs> I just said it's just gigantic. The skull on his back is thinking, damn, you have a fat head. God damn it. Hmm, uh, there must be some correlation between fat-headed men and willpower. See, like down here, his head makes sense. Hilarious collar and everything. And then you go down here, they're like, where are we supposed to stop his head? <laughs> and they just kept going with it. Just look at the artwork. His collar is like an inch below the edge of his hairline. And in the model, it's like a football. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm good. I'm good. (laughs) Well, think about it. If they had made his head to scale, it still would have looked silly. No, it wouldn't. It would look better. No, it would have looked like he had a tiny baby head. See, they did the Sister of Battle well with her scaling. I really like her. I'm really happy right. with how she turned out. So, shall we go to the press release? All right, let's uh, let's head on over to the press release now. There, There's a lot here. Okay, what do we do? Okay, all right, start at this I, time. I, Games I, Workshop I, and Frank Spadnazzi. Shall, shall I take over? Spadnazzi? Spadnazzi. Spotsnit? That's a dumb name. Anyway, continue. Games Workshop and Frank Spotsnit uh, to create live-action Warhammer 40,000 TV series. Oh, okay, so that answers that. Games Workshop and Big Live Productions announce development of a live-action 40K series. Eisenhorn. For immediate release, 17th of July. Games Workshop and Big Live Productions jointly announce today development of Eisenhorn. Live-action science fiction and fantasy television series. I like that they emphasize the science fiction slash fantasy element Mm -hmm. 40k frank spotnitz the man in high castle the x-files will act as both showrunner and executive producer on the series which will be based on the wildly popular warhammer 40,000 games miniatures and novels 
The genre-bending series is set in the Warhammer 40,000 universe, where mankind teeters on the brink of annihilation, while humanity's armies wage unending war across a million battlefields. In the darkness, a secret conflict rages, fought by the agents of the Imperial Inquisition. Drawing from sci-fi, fantasy, and crime genres, Eisenhorn will see Inquisitor Gregor Eisenhorn and his band of investigators fight to thwart the monstrous schemes of aliens, heretics, and demons before mankind's doom is sealed. Warhammer 40,000 is a worldwide phenomenon with miniatures, tabletop games, video games, and novels sold online and in more than 5,000 retail locations around the globe. Just saying, Warhammer... that's actually not a lot. 5,000 retail stores is sad. <laughs> For a niche, like, super no, no, fringe no, 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 no. They're not, war they're not, game? They're not saying that this is niche. They are saying a worldwide phenomenon and then saying they only have 5,000 stores. Well... They just do saying, span the just globe. saying, just saying, do they not continue? Warhammer 40,000 has a passionately devoted fan base who revel in the setting's intricate lore and engaging narrative. That's true. Visiting games, yeah, visiting Games Workshop website more than 100 million times and racking up more than 50 million views of, of Warhammer TV video content last year alone. That's some pretty Im impressive. That mm -hmm. is. Games I mean, Workshop is. Let's not compare that to a YouTuber, but. Details. Games Workshop is the company behind the globally recognized Warhammer 40,000 brand, a household name within geek culture. I think that's nerd culture, but eh, nope, whatever. Nope, geek culture. Boo. While Big Life Production is the award winning international production company whose credits include Amazon's The Man in the High Castle, Medici on Netflix, and Random Ransom on CBS. I have seen none yes? of these. Well, you should probably watch them to get a, you know, feeling for how the quality might be. The Eisenhorn series is based on novels written by New York Times bestselling author Dan Abbott, again, whom I've met, Guardians of the Galaxy, X-Men, The Horus Heresy, originally published in 2001 by Black Library, Games Workshop Publix in, in print. The books have been reprinted in multiple languages and sold over half a million copies of globally. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I also have a... Uh, Autograph, uh, an autographed copy of... I didn't uh, know that Dan Abnett worked on Guardians of the Galaxy. He did. I wonder That's if he really worked good. in the new 52 or the older stuff. I'm really I interested. Think, I think it was the older stuff. Hmm. Big Light Productions creative, uh, creative director Emily Feller, never heard of her, Ordinary Lives, Trust Me, Medici, never seen any of those, will also serve as an executive producer on the series. Uh, Frank's... Okay, these are... The... Uh, the quotes from the Warhammer community articles repeat, except for Andy Smiley, who is Games Workshop Global Head of Marketing and Media. Probably says, the smartest person in all of GW's line right now is this person who decided to go, hey, Duncan, go make, you're making videos and you're popular and people are, are liking you? Yeah, let's just make that the, the head thing that we do. Make him a superstar. Boom. Pretty much. We're thrilled to be working with Frank and his team at Big Light. Warhammer 40k has a global, massive global fan base. They're a passionate community of Warhammer hobbyists who love to engage with our character stories and games. I'm truly delighted we are able to develop a show that will reward their loyalty. Inquisitor Eisenhorn represents one of the best, uh, best loved characters within our worlds, and we're excited to share his exploits and adventures with audiences new and old. Frank and his outstanding team at Big Light have done amazing things with other properties, bringing complex worlds to the screen. And we can't wait to see what our partnership produces for the grim darkness of Warhammer 40,000. That I can't wait for. Yeah, this is... This is a lot to take in. This um, is hype uh, as hell. Yep, this is, this is. I'm really excited about this because it's just, it gives us the opportunity to get so much more out of this. Perhaps even a movie if this is successful. Or it might be a hard dumpster fire. Let's hope for the, the better of those two. Like, legit, let's let's hope that this is a success. Or at least one of those uh, shows that becomes a cult phenomenon. Like Firefly. Like, yeah, like Firefly is actually the perfect yeah, example. Um, less than pray that it doesn't get cancelled after one season. Like Firefly. Like Firefly, yeah. So, uh, just... Because we've gone through all the stuff, can we now start like just wild speculation with no regard for anything? Mm, okay. So, who are uh, so 
I'm going to put forth for uh, anyone who's watching and the uh, my other two co-hosts. Uh, I will put forth Mark Strong to play Eisenhorn. He probably will have to wear a wig, but, you know, makeup can do wonderful things these days. That is true. However, he, he is... He does have a good voice. He, he is, for, for, what, uh, for my purposes, Mark Strong is the voice of Eisenhorn, because you can, if you played the god-awful Eisenhorn mobile game... Yeah. Then Mark Strong voiced Eisenhorn in that, and my goodness, to hear him speak Eisenhorn's words is unbelievable. So yeah, he is already uh, Mark Strong is already uh, pre balded for when Eisenhorn goes radical. Uh, now, one thing that I am worried about is the music that they're going to have to use. Now, GW tends to use a lot of free music in their books and in their um, on their website and everything. Uh, I'm really hoping they actually get like a good chorus for the whole thing, good music. Because without good music, you won't set the proper uh, atmosphere for this kind of series. So it's really that buildup and the suspense is going to need to be there. Um, uh, it, the guy, the Frank fellow, I did some research. He actually owns his own music production company. Oh, that's even, sure. that's that's amazing. Good. Perfect. Good. Now, Perfect. now that man has to. Uh, now the man they put in charge of doing the music for the tv show needs to put on the dawn of war 2 original soundtrack and put it on loop while he does everything because my goodness is that is the dawn of war 2 music good it is good it is good it's in fact so good i use it in queen's court which everybody here should watch your butts yeah. anyway if you want if you want to watch inquisitorial content go watch queen's court yeah where you get to yeah. see all the blunders of inquisitor lockwood well, yeah. not really Inquisitor yet, but... Future Inquisitor. Um, so, John, you were grabbing all the questions? I was. So, first, one of the big questions was, uh, is this going to be on Netflix or TV? So, I'm this, guessing TV. As this... far as I can tell, TV. Yeah, I haven't seen any... Like, this production company, they might... They actually might put it on the BBC. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, because if it is a British company making it, then actually is Big Light Productions British? Hold on, let me check. They're international. International. Okay, then odds are that Games Workshop will probably sell the licensing right to the BBC. Actually, they'll probably just sell it to whomever wants it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, oh, here's a good question. Uh. Do you think it would have been a better idea to have a completely unique adventure, like a you know, no. unique story? No. Or... no. Uh, my reasoning for this is simple. Eisenhorn is a recognized name. It'll catch people just by the name alone. It's kind of like when uh, you see a new movie come out and they announce the actor for it. It's that they're using the name itself to sell the series. Right. Okay. Also, I will would like to add that... Eisenhorn's story is already predetermined. And as we've seen with, say, Game of Thrones, people don't actually mind seeing the same storyline happen. In fact, a lot of people got kind of mad when they ran out of story. Just look at anime. Anyway. Uh, Lord have mercy. Yeah. So uh, they will, this will be the, uh, this will be the rise and fall of Inquisitor Choo Choo. Apparently, there's a train outside. I apologize. Let's go oh, to the no, next the question. The heresy train is here. <laughs> Do you think some of the audio dramas could make a decent short film? Oh, God, yes. Just one inch oh, Shadow yeah. Sword come to mind. Quick Ooh. Anyone who wants to get a wonderful, like, foretaste of what a 40K TV show might be, go watch Love, Death, and Robots. Yes. Oh, my God, yes. So, oh, so so it's good. so good. Oh, like like that's what I actually wanted for a 40k series, just animated versions of the audio dramas. I would love it. Like just 30 minute episodes, that's it. Just boom, right on Netflix, just pow 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 pow, getting all of them done. We could get so many cool things. I would be so all over that. I would love it. Mhm. Mm 
Love, Death, and Robots. Mm-hmm. If you haven't seen it, go see it. It's one of the few shows that I actually sat down and watched all of it at once. It was great. Indeed. All right, next question. If they funded this with Kickstarter, how fast do you think it would be take to fund? Um, pretty instantaneous. Like, I yeah, would say it's... three days. Uh, three days, that's saying a lot. Actually, that's, I would I would say it's quicker. I would definitely about... throw like $100 at it. I, I mean, mean this... think about it. The most One of the most expensive hobbies, aside from magic, in the world, the nerds would throw <laughs> cash at their um... screens. Babe, this is this is definitely not one of the most expensive hobbies in the world. This is far what? from it. What do you mean? I don't even think this is in like the top twenty most expensive hobbies in the world. Warhammer forty K is surprisingly, and this is gonna annoy a lot of people, affordable, especially when you consider things like people who collect Jordans, people who collect guns, people who collect cars, boats. Uh, yeah, this let's let's go gaming wait hobby. To... Yeah, gaming hobby and weight to money ratio. Magic wins by a landslide. 40k is pretty close in that regard, right? No, 40k is much cheaper than Magic the Gathering. I know, I said that. That's what I said, Tarab. Yeah, but I'm clarifying what you said because you said it was all confusing. See? Well, you're confusing. all confusing, Anna, but. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Next question. May I, may I? <laughs> okay, let's see what else we got. People are just li- listening, like someone was saying they want to see a Cowboy Bebop style 40k anime. Oh my god, yes, I'd be all over that for like a Rogue Trader. Let's do it, right there, boom. Um, they kind of, they, they already, like, remember the trailer for the Rogue Trader Kill Team box set? Mm-hmm. That was an anime intro. It was, it definitely was. Yeah, so. Yeah. All right. Let's see, next uh, question. Some, someone said, get the director from Matt Orca, uh TV show. You cut out during that. Can you repeat that? Oh, sorry. Someone said, get the director for uh, who did the uh, Mad Max Fury Road to do uh, yes. Prophets of the Wall. Prophets of the Wall as that? Yes. Yes, that would be amazing. Look, you can almost make whatever kind of story you want, and it can fit. Mm-hmm. Because, Absolutely. I mean, if you think about it, Event Horizon is a 40k movie, and it's about space hell. Yeah. All so, right, what yeah. do we got for the next question? Uh, let's see. Do you think... Ky- oh, yeah, here's one that we kind of talked about. Do you think Caiaphas Kane would have made a better TV series? Uh, more relatable and humorous, less grimdark main character, good variety of characters and scenarios, ACT. I would take him as a TV show, but I wouldn't say he's a better choice per se, because a lot of people don't like the more comical side of 40K, which 40K Not... is a very, like, Caiaphas Kane is a very funny series. Like, let's be real. It is a funny series. It's, I wouldn't, I would say that it's, e- like, it's, uh, you it's could a comedy do movie. it. You could do it quite, it's not, it's comedic. It's not no, comedy. I would say it's a dark comedy. Yeah, I can say that, but I wouldn't put that out as the first step. Oh, Eisenhorn no. is probably better in that regard. Mm-hmm. But man, like, well, that's the thing. You you say you want a Kai of His Kane TV show? Just go watch Black Adder. It's Kai of His Kane the TV show, except uh, except Rowan Atkinson, aka Mr. Bean, plays Kai of His Kane, and he even has his own Jurgen. Yeah, but but let's go Kai of His Kane. 40k boom there we go all right what do we got for the next question uh some people are saying they want to see like a band of brothers like astro militar tv show uh, that could be again okay. again like oh my god they should do a mash 40k tv show yes pretty much yeah the thing about um uh, what's it called so again like all of these are good ideas but for like for the first step into TV shows, this is probably I could not agree more when it comes to the choice of the Eisenhorn series. Oh yeah. Uh, White like... actually asked um, about the Inquisition fan codex that I'm writing. I am still working on that. I've taken a break for a little bit of time. Uh, please forgive me. Victor has Read. not touched it since. 
Hey, I've been busy. He pretends to be busy. <laughs> pretends? Hey. I'm just also, read, read, his, read his full question. Uh, hang on, I just scrolled past it. Will the Inquisition Choo be in the fan codex? Yes. <laughs> the heresy train? I'll put a heresy train in there. <laughs> the Chaos Dwarves will be upset about this. <laughs> They're the ones with the heresy choo-choo. Okay. Uh. Okay. Um, so I think we caught up on all of the questions. There's one asking about accents. Uh, personally, I think American actors are better than British actors, but that's just me. Uh, there are you, some really good British actors, but I don't think that they're going to be able to get the top talents. So Mark we're going to we're going to be stuck with like the mid tier or up and comers. So it should be a good mix of them to show like proper diversity. That, I'd be okay with. That, that's the thing. Like you don't need big names for this. Like sure, Mark Strong is a pretty big name, but you can pretty much put whomever in the extra uh, in the uh, side character roles yeah yeah so yeah it, like you need like eisenhorn probably someone a list Ooh. but aside from that somebody just asked how would you guys feel about a gaunt ghost thing that would be really 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 good although isn't gaunt ghost like not finished Oh, yeah, like Eisenhorn, funnily enough, like the Eisenhorn books, uh, if you uh, actually, the Eisenhorn books are finished. Uh, they got turned into a, for, a quadrology. The Ravener books are finished. And Dan Abnett is currently working on the second book of the Bequin trilogy, which is uh, the Pariah series. She's the blank. Uh, the Gaunt's Ghost thing, animated or otherwise, it would probably work like. Like, much like the Space Marine uh, animated show that I thought of, the an Astro Militarum animated show could work. Kind of like the Star Wars uh, Clone Wars. Like, remember the Clone Wars shorts? Yeah, it could yeah. work like that. Yeah, that could actually work really well. Uh, also, uh, Blood Lost Honor is asking how you feel about the latest book, the latest Gaunt's Ghost book. It was sick. I didn't read it. Oh, it's so good. Okay. What are Ooh. the odds of them casting Eisenhorn too young? Uh, that is actually not a problem because Eisenhorn, at the start of the first book, let me actually grab the Eisenhorn book. He describes how old he is. Let me see. Because let's hope they don't grab some fifteen-year-old kid or seventeen-year-old kid. Yeah, should be this guy who played Spider-Man. Yeah, let's hope that it, <laughs> at least the actor is twenty-five or older. Duncan Rhodes for the role, I'd be okay with that. Huh? He has the face of a living saint, though. True. I'm trying to think. Another person they could do a show about that has, if they wanted to have more original stuff, is uh, called Jericho. Oh yeah. Ooh, that would be nice. And then you could have like, then you could have Steve Buscemi as Scabs. Ha. <laughs> nice. Uh, which is your most favorite faction lore? Okay, so I'm assuming you mean out of like the big, the big names, and it would be the Inquisition. Uh, the Inquisition has always had my favorite lore. It's crime drama in 40k. Um, but aside from the Inquisition, it would have to be Sisters of Battle, which technically fall under Inquisition because they're, they're the military branch of the Auto Hereticus. And beyond that, I would actually have to say... <sighs> oh. oh. It, let's see. Favorite faction besides them would have to be... Mechanicus on my part. Oh, orcs, is... orcs, orcs, orcs. I would have to say, like, the Eldar. Ah, here we go. I found his description of himself. Uh, let's see. So, so you have me then, pictured. Gregor Eisenhorn, Inquisitor, Puritan, Amalathian, 42 years old, standard, and Inquisitor for the past 18 years. I am tall and broad at the shoulders, strong, resolute. I have already told you of my force of will, and you will have noted my prowess with a blade. What else there? 
Am I clean shaven? Yes. My eyes are dark. My hair darker and thick. These things matter little. Come and let me show you how I killed iClone. <laughs> what the hell is this? Is like inquisitorsonly.com profile? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> when you're lonely, inquisitors always watch inquisitor.com. Uh, lonely heretic in need of inquisition. <laughs> lonely heretic in need of purging. Uh, <laughs> it's like a fat life account. <sighs> I can't actually believe that someone name dropped Carlos McConnell. Yeah, instead of Carlos Mencia. No, no, no. It's uh, he's 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 the guy who discovered the feel in it planet. I wish I was joking. How? Okay, at what point did he report that? <laughs> like. I don't know. Like, but that's... he was probably living in an anime harem for quite some time before he's like, fine, I guess I'll report it. Okay, let's see. What else do we got? Um, they do instead, Ravener. No. Oh, I, I love the fact that, oh, yeah. Who, who should play Ravener? Don't worry. You don't need an actor for him. He's a. <laughs> He's a hub. He's a anti grav force chair. Jeez. All right. Uh, let's see what we got. Um, wasn't there or... a hover bike chase scene in book one? Probably. Yes, there was. Uh, Abnett has actually mentioned that fact uh, previously, but I think the fluff has changed a bit since then in the fact that jet bikes aren't as rare because. There, there was something about uh, what's his face, Ravenwing guy, Samael, having the last Imperial jetpack. Yeah, which that, isn't in the lore anymore. That kind of went out the door when the custodian showed up. That went out the door when the custodian show up, and then when Trezine is just like, "Oh, by the way, here's all my 30k Marines I've been collecting." Boop. Huh. And they all huh. just appeared. Nailed it. Which also makes like Dante not the oldest Space Marine anymore. Wait, like, who is? Oh, well... Insert random Terminator from 30k. Doesn't the... I thought they were all kept in stasis. That doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. It freezes time, so they don't age. Yeah, that doesn't mean that time doesn't pass. Yeah, outside of the stasis field. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. It means no, it they're not doesn't. aging, so they're not getting older. Did time pass? Yes, they are older. Uh, Outside of the stasis field. Yeah, that doesn't oh, matter. For those inside, time does not pass. That anyway. isn't important. Also, if you read, uh, if you listen to the audio drama, uh, Our Martyred Lady, uh, Greyfax wasn't kept in stasis, making her older than Dante. Because she's from M36. She's not a space marine. Doesn't matter. She's old. Man. Just saying. Just saying. Um, all right. So, uh, with that, do we have another, uh, and any other questions? Do, do, uh, do, someone says that all, all, all you need for Ravener is a pile of burnt skin. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, you do. So uh. with that, I think we're going to wrap this one up. I want to thank everybody for donating, everybody for following and subscribing. If you want to see more content from this channel, please subscribe to the channel. Ring that stupid bell thingy that's like right over here. For some reason, you need to ring that in order for YouTube to actually show you my videos now. Uh, why they decided to do this is beyond me, but that's what they decided to do. And you can follow me on all sorts of social media. I post on Twitch, Twitter, uh, Facebook. I post a lot of different things on a lot of different places. If you want to support the channel, please check out Patreon. That goes a long way to actually keeping my lights on and my belly fed. And I have a... I, I like food and I like power. Yeah. I don't know where to go from that. Anyway, guys, as always, I'm Norn Queen Alexis. I love you guys. Bye.